could see the existing bridge behind me. It was built in 1955. And uh, just north of that, you could see the beginnings of the new bridge. Um, the, the new bridge, it's going to be parallel to the existing one. Um, and it's going to have uh, four lanes in each direction. And you'll be able to bike across and you'll be able to walk across the Hudson River. And they're moving really fast. Um, and they, you move really fast when the governor wants to know every day how your bridge is doing. The original impetus for this study, for what to do around here, was uh, to reduce congestion and avoid the need to build a new bridge. Um, so the state looked at all sorts of ways to reduce congestion. And the, the ideas that they had to solve this, uh, either they weren't popular or they weren't very feasible. People, were, people had these false expectations. I think that was a really important lesson. If you expect that you could solve a problem or you expect some sort of panacea, then you can't get people to settle down and agree on something that's plausible and feasible. Instead, the easier thing for a politician to do is just study it. Because you don't make any enemies by studying the same thing over and over again. I think what Cuomo did more than anything else was he put all of his political capital behind it. He said, OK, this is my legacy. Um, I had done the gay marriage bill. I had got the budget passed on time. Now I could do something that physically, literally, ties upstate and downstate. It could take something that people have been debating for years, and I could get something done. He figured out how to get construction done in his first term. Because if you use all of your political capital to get support for the bridge, and nothing happens in that first term, you don't get any benefit out of it. But in order to do that, he had to do a few things. He said, the bus lane, oh, it's a great idea. But um, he was told that it would have added several months of more traffic studies that were necessary. The governor said, oh, let's get rid of that. And then he also turned the sort of the public involvement idea into a public campaign. He speeches, he talked to people on the radio, he made lots of phone calls. So what he figured out was he could get construction underway in this sort of this meaningful way that drivers could see. And he could get that done before his, uh, his re-election. So one of the lessons I think also is that if you want to do something big, you have to show how you can get something done in a short amount of time. You have to build support, you have to break through some of the regulatory hurdles, and you have to say, okay, I'm not going to do all these things that people want, but I'm going to get something else done.